Hey, hello everybody, eu sou Adir Ferreira e bem-vindos ao Veda 19, onde vamos ter uma entrevista com o Sam Parker, que é o autor desse livro Retail Anarchy, Anarquia do Varejo, e essa entrevista foi retirada da NPR, National Public Radio, e você vai escutar a entrevista, depois eu volto para explicar tudo certinho, depois você escuta novamente, alright? Você sabe que esse texto e esse áudio estão lá no blog, se você quiser estudar com um pouquinho mais de paciência, um pouquinho mais de calma, está lá no blog também. Vamos começar, você vai escutar a entrevista, depois eu volto explicando, depois a gente escuta de novo. Well, whether we are on the internet, watching TV, or pushing a shopping cart down the store aisles, consumers are constantly inundated with marketing pitches. And they are all fodder for Sam Pocker's blog and his new book, Retail Anarchy. This retail critic and consumer anthropologist came into our New York studios to share his concerns. You know, when I started writing this book, we were at the peak of all this stuff, and I was watching consumers go to the store and just overload their shopping carts with the most ridiculous garbage, you know, blueberry, raspberry flavored dish soap or something, you know, <laughs> and it doubles as a chewing gum and it's got a slogan and a commercial and, and people are filling the carts with it like it's nothing. You know, you're making something up, blueberry, raspberry flavored dish soap, chewing gum. But you actually have things on your blog that are not so far off from that. You know, one of my favorite recent ones is the freeze and eat fruit tubes, uh, which I did a whole expose on my blog about different ways that fruit is being processed. I'm fascinated by the notion in this country that we've stopped making quality products, that we stopped aiming to make quality products, and now we kind of pride ourselves on how we're able to confuse the consumer into giving us their money. And then the result of that is these absolutely insane products. You also rail at great length against marketing tactics that get people to spend more of their money. And one of my favorite passages in your book is about one of your favorite holidays. Yes, Lobster Fest. At our Lobster Fest, we do lobster best. No one else even comes close. From it's utterly ridiculous. I mean, who in their right mind would ever say, hey, let's go celebrate Lobster Fest? I mean, what marketing person really thought anyone was going to fall for this holiday? But so people what, do fall for it. People fall for the ads. They see the ads and they think, wow, we haven't had lobster in a really long time. And they go to Red Lobster. But as you write, Lobster Fest presumably identified the month when they were selling the fewest lobsters, sure. decided to brand it Lobster Fest, and sure. now they're no longer selling the fewest lobsters in that month. Sounds like a success to me. Sure. I suppose it is, you know, from a financial point of view. But is it successful from a cultural point of view? There is no benefit to this. This thing exists entirely to sell more lobsters. So what's your ideal world? I wouldn't say I have an ideal world. I just think it, that the level of consumerism is so out of control. Even now with the recession, you think the level of consumerism is way out of control. It's still outrageous. If you just watch television or listen to the radio or read the newspaper, you know, you hear recession, recession, recession. If you go to a mall on a Saturday, you've never seen the mall so packed. People may not have as much money to spend, but they still desire those items. Are there any companies that leave you speechless because you have nothing to criticize in them? Sure. There's lots of companies. Give uh, me a couple examples. That I think do a great job. I love Spirit Airlines. Hmm. I mean, Spirit Airlines, this is a, a traditional American company that offers a quality product, that's the flight, at an outrageously cheap price. And they don't make any qualms about it. They're saying, we're not going to give you any customer service. If you want a drink, you got to pay for it. If you want to check a bag, you got to pay for it. But if you want a bargain, we're going to give you a bargain and we're going to be fair about it. And they are quite fair about it. I think that's an excellent company. So what's your direct, straightforward message to companies? Stop focusing on your marketing and start focusing on making a quality product that you can offer for a reasonable price. Retail critic and retail cynic Sam Pocker writes the blog and now the book Retail Anarchy. Então o título é Level of Consumerism is out of control. O nível de consumismo está descontrolado, fora de controle. E nós começamos aqui com o host que é o Sam Shapiro da National Public Radio. Ele faz uma introdução. Well, bem. Whether we're on the internet watching TV, se nós estamos na internet assistindo TV, or pushing a shopping cart down the store aisles, ou empurrando um carrinho de compras, esse down não é para baixo, 
é ao longo de down the store aisles, pelos corredores das lojas. Consumers are constantly inundated with marketing pitches. Os consumidores estão constantemente, eles são constantemente inundados, recebem enxurradas de marketing pitches. Pitch aqui é uma oferta de venda, então uma oferta de venda com marketing para você vender. And they are all fodder for Sam Parker's blog. E esses marketing pitches são todos um forro. Father é um forro de alguma coisa, um forro de uma blusa, um forro de um móvel, mas aqui significa material, conteúdo para o blog do Sam Parker and his new book e o livro novo dele, Retail Anarchy, Anarquia do Varejo. This retail critic and consumer anthropologist, este crítico do varejo e antropólogo do consumidor, came into our New York studios, veio aos nossos estúdios em Nova York to share his concerns, para compartilhar suas preocupações. Aí ele diz, you know, sabe, when I started writing this book, quando eu comecei a escrever este livro, we were at the peak of all this stuff, estávamos no pico, no auge de todas essas coisas, and I was watching consumers go to the store, eu estava observando os consumidores irem às lojas, And just overload their shopping carts with the most ridiculous garbage. E simplesmente sobrecarregar, encher os seus carrinhos de compra com o lixo mais ridículo. You know, sabe? Blueberry raspberry flavored dish soap or something. Então, um detergente, um sabão de pia com sabor de mirtilo ou de amora or something. You know? And it doubles... As a chewing gum, que também pode ser usado como chiclete. Então, esse detergente você pode usar também como chiclete. And it's got a slogan in the commercial. E tem um slogan no comercial. And people are filling the carts with it like it's nothing. E as pessoas estão enchendo seus carrinhos com isso como se não fosse nada, como se fosse super normal. You know, you're making something. Você está fazendo alguma coisa. Blueberry raspberry flavored dish soap chewing gum. Então... Um chiclete detergente saborizado de mirtilo e de amora. But you actually have things on your blog. Mas você na verdade tem coisas no seu blog that are not so far off from that. Que não são tão diferentes disso, dessas coisas meio absurdas aqui de cima. Aí ele responde. You know, one of my favorite recent ones is the freeze and eat fruit tubes. Um dos meus favoritos recentes é os fruit tubes, que é meio um sacolé que você freeze and eat fruit. Você congela e come as frutas. Which I did, o qual eu fiz a whole expose on my blog. Eu fiz uma matéria revelando tudo o que acontece sobre isso aqui. About different ways that fruit is being processed. Sobre maneiras diferentes que a fruta está sendo processada. Então aqui expose é uma reportagem que revela todos os prós e os contras. I'm fascinated by the notion, estou fascinado pela noção, in this country, nesse país, that we've stopped making quality products. Paramos de fazer produtos de qualidade. That we stopped aiming to make quality products. Que paramos de almejar, de querer fazer produtos de qualidade. And now we kind of pride ourselves on how we're able to confuse the consumer into giving us their money. E agora nós meio que nos orgulhamos em como a gente é capaz de confundir o consumidor para ele nos dar o dinheiro deles. Então esse into aqui indica um convencimento, tá? And then the result of that, então o resultado disso, is this absolutely insane products. São esses produtos absolutamente insanos. Aí o apresentador diz... You also rail, você também faz campanha contra, que rail, at great length, extensivamente, against marketing tactics, contra táticas de marketing, that get people to spend, aqui get to convencer, que convencem as pessoas a spend more of their money, gastar mais do seu dinheiro, and one of my favorite passages in your book, e uma das passagens favoritas minhas do seu livro, is about one of your favorite holidays, é sobre um dos seus feriados favoritos. Yes, Lobster Fest. A festa da lagosta. Aí tem uma musiquinha. At our Lobster Fest, 
We do lobster best. No one else even comes close. Então, na festa da lagosta, a gente faz a melhor lagosta e ninguém chega nem perto. Aí o Sam diz, it's utterly ridiculous. É completamente ridículo. I mean, aí ele vai explicar. Quer dizer, who in their right mind, quem em seu juízo, would ever say, diria, hey, let's go celebrate Lobster Fest. Vamos lá celebrar a festa da lagosta. I mean, quer dizer, what marketing person really thought, que pessoa do marketing realmente achou, anyone was going to fall for this holiday. Que alguém ia cair, alguém ia ser enganado por esse festival, por esse feriado. But people do fall for it. Mas as pessoas realmente caem nisso, são enganadas por isso. People fall for the ads. As pessoas são enganadas, caem pelos anúncios. They see the ads and they think. Vem os anúncios e pensam. Wow, we haven't had lobster in a really long time. And they go to Red Lobster. Nós não comemos lagosta há muito tempo e aí eles vão para Red Lobster. But as you write, mas ao passo que você escreve... Lobster Fest presumably identified the month when they were selling the fewest lobsters. Lobster Fest presumivelmente identificou o mês que eles estavam vendendo menos lagostas. Sure, claro. Decided to brand it Lobster Fest. Decidiram chamá-lo, colocar a marca de Lobster Fest. And now they're no longer selling the fewest lobsters in that month. E agora, é claro que eles não estão mais vendendo menos lagostas naquele mês. Sounds like a success to me. Parece um sucesso para mim. Sure, I suppose it is. Acho que é. You know, from a financial point of view. De um ponto de vista financeiro. But is it successful from a cultural point of view? Mas é um sucesso de um ponto de vista cultural? There is no benefit. Não tem benefícios, não tem vantagens. This thing exists entirely to sell more lobsters. Isso aí existe inteiramente, simplesmente para vender mais lagostas. So, what's your ideal world? Qual é o seu mundo ideal? I wouldn't say I have an ideal world. Não diria que eu tenho um mundo ideal. I just think that the level of consumerism is so out of control. Somente acho que o nível de consumismo está fora de controle. Even now with the recession, mesmo agora com a recessão, you think the level of consumerism is way out of control? Você acha que o nível de consumismo está realmente, esse way aqui para enfatizar, out of control? It's still outrageous. É ainda ultrajante, é ainda um absurdo. If you just watch television or listen to the radio, se você simplesmente assistir TV e escutar o rádio, or read the newspaper, the journal, you know, you hear, você escuta, recession, recession, recession. If you go to a mall on a Saturday, se você for no shopping no sábado, you've never seen the mall so packed. Você nunca viu o shopping tão lotado de gente. People may not have as much money to spend, as pessoas podem não ter tanto dinheiro para gastar. But still, they desire those items. Mas ainda elas desejam aquelas coisas. Are there any companies that leave you speechless because you've nothing to criticize in them? Há empresas que te deixam sem fala, perplexo, porque você não tem nada para criticar nelas? Sure, there's lots of companies. Claro, tem várias companhias. Give a couple of examples. Dá alguns exemplos. There's a lot of companies, e continua. That I think do a great job. Que eu acho que fazem um ótimo trabalho. I love Spirit Airlines. Aerolíneas Spirit. I mean, Spirit Airlines. This is a traditional American company. É uma empresa americana tradicional. That offers a quality product. Que oferece um produto de qualidade. That's the flight. Que é o voo. At an outrageously cheap price. Num preço absurdamente barato. And they don't make any qualms about it. E eles não têm receio disso. They're saying we're not going to give you any customer service. Eles dizem, nós não vamos te dar nenhum serviço de cliente. If you want a drink, você quer uma bebida, you gotta pay for it. Você tem que pagar. If you want to check a bag, se você quiser despachar uma mala, you gotta pay for it. Você tem que pagar. But if you want a bargain, mas se você quiser um bom negócio, we're going to give you a bargain. Vamos te dar um bom negócio. And we're going to be fair about it. E vamos ser justos com isso. And they are quite fair about it. Eles são bem justos com isso. I think that's an excellent company. Acho que é uma excelente companhia. So what's your direct, straightforward message to companies? Então qual é a sua mensagem direta e ao ponto para essas companhias? Stop focusing on your marketing. 
Pare de focar no marketing and start focusing on making a quality product e comece a focar em fazer um produto de qualidade that you can offer for a reasonable price. Que você pode oferecer por um preço razoável. Aí acaba a entrevista e ele diz Retail critic, crítico de varejo, and retail cynic, e um cínico do varejo, Sam Parker writes the blog, escreve o blog, and now the book, e agora o livro Retail Anarchy. Ok? Agora a gente vai ouvir e ler essa entrevista novamente, e a gente se vê amanhã no Veda. Well, whether we are on the internet, watching TV, or pushing a shopping cart down the store aisles, consumers are constantly inundated with marketing pitches. And they are all fodder for Sam Pocker's blog and his new book, Retail Anarchy. This retail critic and consumer anthropologist came into our New York studios to share his concerns. You know, when I started writing this book, we were at the peak of all this stuff, and I was watching consumers go to the store and just overload their shopping carts with the most ridiculous garbage, you know, blueberry raspberry flavored dish soap or something, you know, <laughs> and it doubles as a chewing gum and it's got a slogan and a commercial and, and people are filling the carts with it like it's nothing. You know, you're making something up, blueberry raspberry flavored dish soap chewing gum. But you actually have things on your blog that are not so far off from that. You know, one of my favorite recent ones is the freeze and eat fruit tubes, uh, which I did a whole expose on my blog about different ways that fruit is being processed. I'm fascinated by the notion in this country that we've stopped making quality products, that we stopped aiming to make quality products, and now we kind of pride ourselves on how we're able to confuse the consumer into giving us their money. And then the result of that is these absolutely insane products. You also rail at great length against marketing tactics that get people to spend more of their money. And one of my favorite passages in your book is about one of your favorite holidays. Yes, Lobster Fest. At our Lobster Fest, we do Lobster Fest. No one else even comes close. It's utterly ridiculous. I mean, who in their right mind would ever say, hey, let's go celebrate Lobster Fest? I mean, what marketing person really thought anyone was going to fall for this holiday? But so people what, do fall for it. People fall for the ads. They see the ads and they think, wow, we haven't had lobster in a really long time. And they go to Red Lobster. But as you write, Lobster Fest presumably identified the month when they were selling the fewest lobsters, sure. decided to brand it Lobster Fest, and sure. now they're no longer selling the fewest lobsters in that month. Sounds like a success to me. Sure. I suppose it is, you know, from a financial point of view. But is it successful from a cultural point of view? There is no benefit to this. This thing exists entirely to sell more lobsters. So what's your ideal world? I wouldn't say I have an ideal world. I just think it, that the level of consumerism is so out of control. Even now with the recession, you think the level of consumerism is way out of control. It's still outrageous. If you just watch television or listen to the radio or read the newspaper, you know, you hear recession, recession, recession. If you go to a mall on a Saturday, you've never seen the mall so packed. People may not have as much money to spend, but they still desire those items. Are there any companies that leave you speechless because you have nothing to criticize in them. Sure. There's lots of companies. Give uh, me a couple examples. That I think do a great job. I love Spirit Airlines. Hmm. I mean, Spirit Airlines, this is a, a traditional American company that offers a quality product, that's the flight, at an outrageously cheap price, and they don't make any qualms about it. They're saying, we're not going to give you any customer service. If you want a drink, you got to pay for it. If you want to check a bag, you got to pay for it. But if you want a bargain, we're going to give you a bargain and we're going to be fair about it. And they are quite fair about it. I think that's an excellent company. So what's your direct, straightforward message to companies? Stop focusing on your marketing and start focusing on making a quality product that you can offer for a reasonable price. Retail critic and retail cynic Sam Pocker writes the blog and now the book, Retail Anarchy.